You've played New Horizons for a couple months now. You've completely upgraded everything on your island. Your house, the museum, resident services, you've caught all the bugs and fish for the month, and you feel like you've done everything there is to do. You want to keep playing Animal Crossing in between updates, but you don't feel motivated to do your dailies every day. Many people find doing the same thing day after day tedious. Animal Crossing is one of those games that players tend to grind everything out as quick as they can, whether it's because the game is on the easier side for the most part, and thus does not take long to fly through, or because it's so fun you just can't put it down. So what do you do? If you're creative enough with how you play, there's always something different. There's probably a part of your island that you're just not a big fan of, or that you've wanted to improve. So change it up. Go on Reddit, Twitter, Tumblr, Dream Islands, whatever you have to do to get some inspiration, and see what ideas other players have had. Admire their creativity, and do what you can to make it your own. While you're at it, make sure to make some room on your island for uh, potential spoilers that I've already talked about in my summer prediction video. I go through some previous data mines. The video is in the iCard up here. The spoilers start around the 4 minute 25 second mark, so if you don't care about knowing what could possibly be coming and want to know what you might have to make room for on your island, it's there. Keep in mind that developers can change these potential additions at any time. Just because it's in the code doesn't mean it's set in stone. Okay, moving on. Create an additional profile on your Switch and make a new house on your island. It's a good way to get the feeling of starting over without actually having to completely erase your island. And then eventually you can just use the extra profile to upgrade the house and make it a specific theme. After visiting a few viewers' islands on stream, I've seen what you can actually do with the empty houses. Create a theater with multiple rooms for different shows, a dressing room in one, a public restroom in the other, or maybe make a themed restaurant with a waiting area, a seating area, and a kitchen. That way you don't have to mess up your perfectly decorated main house, but you can still fit in those extra ideas that you have floating around your head. You can have up to eight different profiles on your Switch, so your options are seemingly limitless. Well, they're limited to eight houses, but you, you get my point. Heck, if you're really crazy, actually restart your island. Though beware, you might find doing the same thing all over again that you just did back in March might be a little too tedious. Personally, I always regret deleting my first save file, so think hard before you make this decision. But maybe you'd enjoy going back to the deserted island tent feel. Kick a villager out when they ask. No, oh, I'm not telling you to get rid of your dreamy, your lifer. Just one that you really don't care about. Next time that thought bubble appears, wait a few days for it to show up on a villager that you're not completely attached to. As horrible as it feels to say, we all have that one villager that even though we may or may not like, there's always someone at the bottom. Being forced to invite a new villager opens a few more activities for you to do. Maybe you're running low on Nook Miles. Do some Nook Miles Plus tasks to build them back up so you can get a bunch of Nook Miles tickets to go island hopping. Both the grinding of miles and the island hopping itself will take up some time and give you something to do that you don't do every day. While you're at it, start working on long-term Nook Miles goals. I bet a lot of you watching haven't even completed the catching 100 fish in a row goal. Go find some manila clams, craft some bait, and start fishing. Just don't miss a fish. Or do. It'll take longer that way. Set up a minigame area for your friends or visitors. I've seen some cool ones. Scavenger hunts, mazes, board games made up of terraform land, a matching game like New Leaf had, even a murder mystery game. I do wish we got the mini games back that we had on Tortimer Island in New Leaf. I'm crossing my fingers for a future update that includes these, but I'm not holding my breath. It was fun to play with friends, although I'm not sure how hard it would be to incorporate up to eight people instead of just four. But it can't be that difficult, right? Says the girl that knows next to nothing about game design. Speaking of design, if you haven't experimented with how horrible of a pixel artist you are, what a better time than now. Play around with some simple design ideas. Get inspiration to make cool clothes, or a design that would look awesome to customize some of your furniture with. Don't forget to share your artwork with the world so the rest of us awful artists won't feel so alone. If you're normally a completionist, good news. New Horizons has a ton of stuff to collect and accomplish. Through the Nook Shopping app, you can access your catalog. This lists every item and every single color variation that your character has held in their pocket. This means that you need to collect every furniture, clothing, wallpaper, flooring, rug, backpack, trophy, and tool that exists in the game. And there are thousands of them. It seems like a completely impossible task, but it has been done before and it can be done again. In New Horizons, this requires a lot of work with other people who have their own copies of New Horizons. Your Nook's cranny will sell furniture items in only one or sometimes two different colors. Many of the items that exist in the game have five or six color variations available. 
Working with other people is the easiest way to collect all the colors. Red will have some of these item variations for sale when he shows up on your island. Usually the furniture he sells is a color that isn't available in your nook's cranny. Don't forget to catch three of every type of bug and fish for the models from Flick and CJ. These are also included in your catalog. Working towards the catalog makes me excited to check out what's in the store every day. I used to just casually look and not see anything of value. Now I'm constantly checking to see what new stuff showed up for the day. And it gives you a reason to read your friends' stores. And if no one you know plays New Horizons, just hound them until they do. Then you'll have someone to play with every day. If you're looking for something less extensive to do, find out what your hot item of the day is. Grind for resources or use the ones already in your inventory and craft away. You'll spend time crafting, which you probably haven't done in a bit, and gain bells in the process. There's a seemingly endless amount of people on Reddit that would love your help with gathering of resources, furniture, or turnip prices. Go find some friends, help the community, share your time with others who also enjoy the game. In the end, Animal Crossing is a life sim game. It's not meant for you to grind, just like you shouldn't be grinding out your actual life. Take time and enjoy the little things. This mainly single player game has more hours than any other single player game on my Switch. Animal Crossing becomes what you make it. If it begins to feel like work and you dislike playing, then stop. There's nothing wrong with putting a game down for a little bit or a long while. There are thousands upon thousands of other games you can play in the meantime. We're at a point where there are next to no release dates for new games, especially in the Nintendo sphere. Start chipping away at your backlog. Find some cheaper free games on the eShop. It's okay to be bored of the game you've already sunk a couple hundred hours or more into. Is there anything that you do to change up your gameplay? Help others by commenting below, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!